I think everyone should have a Maserati. This one's back from its Euro trip. So it's done 5,000 kilometers all around Europe, um, France, Germany, and other countries, I think. But anyway, and they're back uh, safely, had a wonderful time. They went on the um, big Maserati rally in the Black Forest with many other Maserati Mistrals. So that's wonderful. One of our subscribers has asked about my opinion of these cars. And I think they're lovely. <laughs> no, he's obviously wants to know more than that. Considering buying one, so he's obviously the, the infectious enthusiasm for all things Maserati has caught on. And this chap's asked, you know, what, what are my thoughts on it? He's had old cars before, um, Italian cars, Lancia and so on. I said, well, yeah, di bit different to a Lancia. Um, you know, Lancia are known for their quality, but not necessarily known for you know, their power in those cars of that era, whereas this is a bit more um, brutal than that. So it's very powerful, big engine, you know, dare I say a bit of a truck compared to a Lancia, but very robust and good for it. I mean, they're reasonably light, actually. This was a fairly lightweight construction with a box chassis and the aluminium bodywork. So what can we say about them? Well, it's almost an Aston Martin, <laughs> or rather an Aston Martin is almost a Maserati. And the reason I say that is they share so many things, so many parts the same. So if you're looking at sort of DB5, DB4, DB5, even to a degree, I think the six have a lot of these same components. So we've got, we start at the back, we've got a Salisbury back axle, well that's English, same as a, as a, as a Aston, same as the Jaguar Mark II and Mark I. We've got a prop shaft, connects it to the gearbox. The prop shaft is a hardy spicer. So that's the, you know, when you talk about a universal joint, the cross joint, it's hardy spicer joint. The prop shaft themselves is made by them, which is English again, and the sort of the finest quality really. So that's a good thing. Then we're connected to a gearbox. Gearbox is ZF, so that's German. And again, one of the best gearboxes around, um, still producing wonderful gearboxes and so on. Uh, and then we connect up to our engine, which is all Maserati. That's their own thing. But it's a six cylinder twin over a cam. So much like the Aston Martin engine, or to a degree, the Jaguar XK, although the XK has a cast iron block. So just in that running gear, that lot, you've got a lot of, lot of similarities. We then move on to front suspension, and that's identical. That's the same thing on, on the Astons and the same as a Mark I Jag. I think the Mark II Jag. I can't remember the manufacturer's name. It's uh, something like Alder and Allen. Sounds like a sort of a, um, a, a, a variety um, show or, a, or, you know, a sort of um, comedy duo from the, from the days of, uh, the, st of the stage. <laughs> anyway. So I'm sure people know what, that's, what they're called. Then we've got our Barani wires. Well, of course, we know they're Italian. So very, very Italian but are on the Rudge design, which is so very, very English. Remember, red right hand. Look at that video if you don't know what I'm talking about. Brakes, girling, English again. So they're finest quality. And then we get onto some of the electrics. Well, we've got some Lucas stuff in there. Lucas wiper motor, generally very reliable, but I hear that one's failed monumentally lately and let someone very important down. <laughs> anyway. Use it no or no, and those it don't, we'll have to find out. And uh, gauges, uh, Smiths or Jaeger, which is near, it's the same thing really. So they're English, although the Jaeger is obviously the French Smiths. So that's that bit. So that sort of covers that lot. So that's all your running gear. Leather interior, Connolly leather, again, <laughs> English. But again, this is all Aston Martin stuff, you know. So 
if you think of the DB6 as a superleggera touring bodywork, this is not dissimilar. Same, it's a different different thing, it's fur, but you know, it's a lightweight body put onto a lightweight chassis. So that's sort of that really. Um, then we get into sort of things like um, the chrome work. Well, that's all handmade. So all this stuff is handmade to the chassis. So when you take these apart, they're all numbered, but it's the same number. It's not the chassis number, it's a sort of build number. And that would all be done, the bodywork would be made, and then the two would part whilst the brass stuff is all chrome plated and the aluminium bodywork is painted. Now, whilst we're talking about aluminium bodywork, a lot of people talk about the Mistral being a rare aluminium bodied version. Well, they're all aluminium bodied. There's, there's no steel ones. The only steel bit is that on the spiders, the back bit, but the, the boot skin is alley you know, it's aluminium, but this is steel. But the coupes are all aluminium, and people talk about a rare aluminium coupe, and, and that's quite often see it, dealers have got it in their adverts and so on. Um, but those that know have said no, there's never a steel-bodied one. The, I think the Sebring's steel-bodied, but that's a different car. So they're all aluminium, so that's that. They, although it's a fur design, they're coach built up in Turin, by, I think it's called Majoli. I can't remember the name of the, the how to pronounce it or the name, but it was the coach builders that latterly um, built the Lancia Kappa Coupe, did the coach building of that for Lancia, and they did those pretty little Fiat Bacchettas. They were all built there. And then soon after that era, they shut down, then they're, they're no more. But when they were making these, they were also making the gear bodied, um, Fiat 23S, you know, that beautiful coupe that, that predates the um, Fiat Dino coupe. They were doing that. So that, that's that bit. Um, what more? Well, what separates these from all the other cars of its era is the injection system. So I think it was the first uh, production car with fuel injection. But anyway, it has Lucas fuel injection. And we know about that, that's English. And I've done a few videos on that, so look them up if you want to know more about that. Now, a lot of these cars have had the injection system taken off and they've been replaced by Weber carburetors, um, which is sort of to their detriment. Um, although it does make them more reliable in many people's eyes. Uh, that's not that the injection system is inherently unreliable, it's just it's a bit finickety to set up and it, it, it's, it's governed by the vacuum in the inlet manifold. So if you've got any running problem whatsoever, ignition issue, that upsets the manifold vacuum that then upsets the signal to the metering unit, the Lucas metering unit, and that upsets it. And then it doesn't right, work properly. And in period, the Lucas fuel pump, what they call the bomb, used to give it a lot of trouble. Uh, they would overheat. So, you know, but that all this stuff can be ironed out now and can be made to be reliable and can be made to work. Hence, you can do 5,000 kilometers in it like my customers have just done over a period of four weeks. So there we are. Um, they're nice things. Now they're quite robust in, in, you know, with those mechanical components, they're all quite robust components. Um, but that isn't a bad thing. And because of this, lineage of the shared, uh, these items being shared with Aston Martin and Jaguar, it does mean that some of these things are available or can be reconditioned or have been even reproduced, um, which again makes it, makes it quite a good thing to own. So generally I think they're wonderful, uh, but you know, it is an exotic car. So it might be less than half the price of the equivalent Aston Martin, but it's just as expensive to restore, if not more so in some ways, and, and just as expensive to run. So they're not to be taken aboard lightly. But then anything exotic in Italian, well, anything exotic, <laughs> it's expensive to run. Um, if you're worried about penny pinching, you know, perhaps uh, get on some sort of, um, <laughs> some sort of loyalty scheme with an electric car, <laughs> or walk. <laughs> because that's free, apart from the cost of shoe leather. But anyway, there's a lot more to say about this, but I'm gonna save that for another day because uh, I'm tired, it's late, 
even though the sun's still shining, but it's home time. So I think everyone should have a Maserati. So good night. <laughs> <laughs>